basically she's she's managed by um ing she's massively backed by by nike is it a case uh only that you because you, again you've worked with athletes you've seen and you've got a lot of athlete friends some of them peak too early I don't know if there's a thing. No, I don't think there's a thing like too early. I was I see people saying, oh, you know, he's going to burn out at that rate. We have now much younger um, Tour de France winners as well in cycling than we used to have. They used to be late 20s, 30 years old. And there was a trend going older and older. Now they're early 20s. Well, I always say as an athlete, everybody's different and you have to take your success as it comes. And who says that a career has to be 10, 10, 15 years old? What about just being really good in your, as a late teenager, early 20s? And then you're done by 25. What's wrong with that? If they had fun, if it's been a good career, um, you know, it opens up to a lot a long rest of a life. You don't have to all go until we're 40. So I'm very open minded to some ending it younger and some later. Sure, some might might burn out, but I think I'd rather burn out than just fade away. That's really not something that I would subscribe in, in sports in general to. You know, That's most it. pros make that mistake and I understand it. They want to keep it going, but I think, you know, burnout yeah, is good. We, we, we see it in cycling like with Valverde and there's other guys who hung on and are continue to hang on because they, as you said, they, you know, they don't know anything better. And I want to come straight to you with this one. Um, one of the big issues that's been thrown around is that her coach, her new coach is Russian. Um, that surely shouldn't make a difference, especially in tennis. There might be a language issue, but I'd, I'd imagine that that should be about it. Um... He speaks perfect English, by the way. He speaks well, perfect English. Well, there you English, go. So then, no then it shouldn't really be a problem at all. If, if that's who she's decided, I, I feel like she's probably bounced around coaches after, like Uli said, probably having success early, not a bad thing, but I think because then she hasn't been as successful, I think she's kind of found herself bouncing between coaches. Um, if this is who she wants to try, take on a different direction, then I don't see why the media, you know, for, for all this time, even when she's been poor, the media have kind of tried to get behind her a little bit. Why is a Russian person coaching her going to going to change all that? Surely they should be backing her. She she's clearly got the talent. I, I think mentally at the moment there's a block there that she's she's now getting nowhere near the levels that she was during that US Open victory that she had. Yeah, yeah. She's a huge server, but her service needs to be all over the place. Andrew Flint, I mean it was mentioned to me by a former tennis pro, um, a world tour player, who said that she she has all the hallmarks of a Jennifer Capriati, but you know she, she Capriati started very very young and was huge in a much bigger market than the UK. The, you know there still is hope for 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 a nineteen year old like like Raducanu, isn't there? Oh, actually, and, 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 sorry, sorry. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, Andrew guys. Oh, okay, You're, uh, he's muted, Andrew. Sorry, uh, you know, I think I, I think tennis is a funny sport. It's uh, you see these players that basically, if you're not something by 17, you're not you're not going to be something most of the time. There's there's outliers, of course, but you know, she won so young, and it, it she really came out of nowhere in that U.S. Open, and and you'll see here and there in the majors, especially where in the Grand Slam events where uh, a an a dark horse will come in and win a tournament. And that doesn't mean they're one of the best players in the world. They just get hot at the right time. And, and, you know, some people I think feel like she is that type of story where maybe she just got hot and during the right tournament. And, and now she's floundering to find what that, that consistency to be that good of a player. Again, um, sometimes players will win a grand slam and then you don't really ever hear much from them again. Um, it's rare, of course, but uh, you know, I certainly think, she's still so young. I think there's still a lot of time. And if she can get the right coach and that coach player relationship is so important in tennis. And you really do find, you know, some, some of the top players, they stay with their coaches for a long time and, and some of them change quite frequently and they don't find the same success. And so I, I think she could find that same level of success again. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of talk that she won't. And, and I could see that as well, but I, I think she'll rebound. I think she'll, she'll be a player that's, you know, a force to be reckoned with, with, for grand slams for the next decade, but um, she's not there right now. Okay, well, she'll do an Alan Partridge and bounce back. Uh, Andrew, Flint, just a couple of words from you on this one, um, because you're going to start off the next one, which is actually more down your alley. Uh, with Radicano, I mean, I mean you, 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 you know tennis as well. I mean, this is it's a difficult situation 
people are saying with their coach that he's Russian, that it's a big difficulty. Hmm. But do you think, are the British public, are they going to forgive her? Are they going to just keep backing her? Or will they do a, I don't know, like a Jeremy Bates on her? That's a reference to a player who was never quite good enough, but did well. <laughs> no, I look, I, I think she, her place in the affections of the British tennis public is um, pretty secure because it was just a, you know, a fairy tale story. We like stories, don't we? Um, and also, I think as well, when she when she was speaking, was it early last, no, was it after after the US Open, the next tournament it was, she spoke about her, well, she spoke about burning out, she spoke about her, her mental health struggles and one of the more polarising figures in British society, Piers Morgan, slated her initially and said, oh, you're not tough enough, you need to toughen up. And everybody rallied around her uh, and not against Piers Morgan, which is pretty standard, really. But I think that actually will help her in the long run if she takes a bit of time out or says, look, I'm just not going to play that many tournaments. And I, th I suspect the US Open is, is obviously, you know, given that's where she broke out, um, is going to be a big tournament for her. But if she just slows down a bit, I think people will be quite happy with that and they won't forget about it because she's such an iconic story already. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, her background story is, is amazing. You know, kind of the, the child of immigrants. Um, you know, immigrants. She's a child, an immigrant child of immigrants. So it's it's a big story. Um, the British public always love backing a Romanian, Canadian, Chinese. Uh, what, what what else is she? Uh, she could have some Irish there. Who knows? Uh, okay. <laughs>